Hello everyone, welcome back to an academy. This is Deepak Krishna VM, ME Structural Engineering AMI, a verified educator. So in this chapter or in this lesson, uh, let's see how to measure the flexural strength of the concrete by using the flexural strength test. All right. But uh, before that, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the Academy and also follow us on the other platforms like Facebook, official app and the website of an Academy. So let's see. Hello everyone. Good to see you. Hope you're having a good time. So previously we have seen how to measure the compressive strength of the concrete and also to measure the split tensile strength of the concrete. Uh, so in today's chapter, today's lesson, we are going to see how to perform the flexural strength test of the concrete. All right. This is one of the most important tests in the concrete and let's see why that's so in the basic points. So first and foremost, let's see what flexural strength actually is. So it can be explained in a simple words like it's a measure of tensile strength of the concrete okay it's a kind of measure of tensile strength of the concrete identifies the amount of stress and force in an unreinforced concrete uh, section that is a slab a beam or any other structure can that can withstand uh, and that can withstand such that it resists any uh, bonding uh, any bending failure pardon me bending failure okay so another uh, another way we can express this uh, quantity as it's a term that indicates the measure of maximum bending moment a beam can withstand in accordance to our experiment okay so it indicates that the measure of maximum bending moment a, be a beam can resist so this maximum bending moment a structure can resist is also known as the moment of resistance okay so any uh, laboratorical experiment should be based on some basic guidelines provided by a recognized institution so here it's the Indian standards 516-1956. Okay, so this uh, term is also known as the bending stress, moment of resistance and fracture strength. So all these terms are correlated and more or less the same. Okay, now according to IS code, uh, there are uh, the, according to IS code, it recommends the, uh, the practice of using third point loading, me loading method for this for the practice for the performance for the per for performing this experiment okay uh, there are two types that is the central point loading and third point loading method so central point loading we provide the load or load is applied at the center of the specimen where the bending moment is maximum okay so the fracture will be in the center whereas in the third point loading it is uh, done through two rollers or two supports in the top side and also the fracture will happen anywhere in the one third of the tensile zone whether there is a weaker section in the concrete all right now let's move on to the actual procedure of or other actual experiment itself first and foremost let's see what are the equipments required for this experiment so first and foremost we have the universal testing machine also known as the utm which is a uh, prevail in, in which is prevalent in any uh, any college which has a civil engineering uh, department okay so this is a universal testing testing machine so i hope you understand what that is you can see in your laboratory itself next one is the other b moles okay so here we are using the so previously for compressive strength the, the, those were cubes for split tensile strength we were using the cylinders so here we are using the beams okay so we have two moles right here two sets of moles uh, that is uh, one is 15 into 15 into 70 centimeters uh, dimensions second one is 10 into 10 into 10 and 50 centimeter dimension okay so this is chosen based on the aggregate size so any aggregate which is less than 18 mm this mold size has to be choosed anything which is above 18 can be used by can be used this uh, mold okay which can use this mold next one we need a tamping bar so in this experiment we use a tamping bar not a tamping rod so it has a 40 centimeter length two two kilograms of weight and also it has an end which, uh, with, uh, through which the tamping is provided or the compaction is provided which has an area of 25 into 25 mm okay and also now we have four steel rollers which has the diameter of 38 mm uh, which uh, two upon which the the specimen uh, rests and uh, uh, through two to uh, through the other two the load is applied to the specimen okay now again we have the scoop and trowel for the mix proportioning and the um, pro preparation of the mix and then we have an electronic weighing balance okay so that's all for the equipments let's move on to the mixing next okay so mixing has to be done in a or can we say in a systematic manner in a systematic manner 
that means first mix the cement and fine aggregate mix it thoroughly until it's uh, it is formed into a homogeneous mixture where the color will become you uh, a single color that means a grayish color okay now to this add the coarse aggregates okay mix it thoroughly until until the coarse aggregates are completely distributed now add the, the design water to it mix it thoroughly until we get a mixer until we get a homogeneous mix and a mix of desired consistency okay now let's see the sampling of the beam mold first first and foremost clean the beam mold and oil it now fill the uh, beam mold by uh, with the concrete in three layers and each layer is approximately of equal depths okay so comp so while we are filling the layers compact each layer with a minimum of 30 tampings by using that tamping bar okay so the tamping the compaction provided or the tamping provided should be equally distributed into the entire matrix of the concrete filled okay once the molds are filled level the top clean the side level the top surface okay there should not be any protruding uh, coarse aggregates or any extra water or an extra cement anything on the top surface everything should be cleaned uh, uh, make it level and give a small finish that's it okay after this uh, the specimens are stored in the molds for 48 hours please note that the code prefers 48 hours not 24 hours for this experiment okay after that they are marked in accordance to the uh, procedure or the uh, test, test test days and after that uh, the these molds are removed carefully from the mo uh, these uh, specimens are removed carefully from the mold and they then these are submerged in water bath okay so the optimum temperature for water should be 27 plus or minus 2 degrees celsius and at each 7 days at interval of each 7 days uh, the water has to be checked if whether there is any uh, growth in it or whether, uh, whether there is any unwanted external uh, disturbance in the water okay so please check every seven days now after this let's move on to the actual testing procedure okay now the testing procedure we uh, adopt the method known as third point loading method which is uh, recommended by the IS 516-1956 so let's see so this is how the setup looks like okay so this will be the specimen we have four four rollers right here so two at the base where the specimen rests two on the top uh, along with which the load will be applied this is the depth of the specimen this is the entire length of the specimen and this is the L by one third one third one third okay as you can see we are it is divided into one by three okay so this length this sender to sender length will be either 60 or 40 okay so 60 length will be for the 15 centimeter specimen and 40 centimeter length for the 10 centimeter specimen okay and also this sender to sender distance uh, this roller to roller sender to sender distance will be 20 centimeter for 15 centimeter and also 13.3 for 10 centimeter okay i hope you understand that calculations i mean that setup so this is an actual photograph of the setup uh, to understand to make you understand more rollers supports and all the specimens okay so that's it now let's move on to the testing procedure okay first and foremost clean the surface okay clean the surface of the uh, UTM uh, uh, remove any kind of extra dust or extra dirt or extra you can say the coarse aggregates or anything over it it should be clean thoroughly okay after that position the rollers in accordance to the specimen type as I said before that means that bottom rollers will be either 60 centimeter for 15 centimeter specimen 40 centimeter 40 centimeter for 10 centimeter specimen the top uh, two specimen will be distance in 20 centimeter for 15 centimeter specimen 13.3 centimeter for 10 centimeter specimen okay now we position the rollers and the specimen is kept over it and the both the other two rollers are kept and the plate is kept over that okay as we see in the picture now the another thing we have to keep in mind is that the specimen has to be tested immediately after that after they are taken from the uh, water okay they should be in that wet condition only okay then only we can clearly get a correct idea about the flexural strength test okay now that's it now apply the load at the rate of 400 kilogram per minute per 15 centimeter specimen 180 kilogram per minute for 10 centimeter specimen okay so we uh, we kept all the specimens in the correct position apply the load as per uh, as per the rate that I've given here and now note down the load at which the specimen fails that load is the maximum load okay it's very easy to read from the UTM machine UTM actually so that's the specimen so that's only the procedure it's very simple 
Okay, so only thing we have to uh, really care about or really careful about is the roll of positioning and also to keep the posi or key to keep the specimen in the correct position. Okay, specimen has to be kept in centrally uh, as we see in the picture and also the side has to be 90 degrees with the bottom rollers also. Obvi if you see the picture itself, we can understand how the setup is clearly clear. Okay, now uh, that's it. So we have two, so now we move on to the calculation actually. Uh, so we have two formulae right here. Okay, so FB, PL by BD square. So uh, flexural strength, PL by BD square. When A value is greater than 20 centimeter for 15 centimeter specimen, and also A value is greater than 13.3 centimeter for 10 centimeter specimen. Okay, when when this value comes in this range, we uh, use this formula. Okay, now there's another formula that is FB is equal to 3PA by BD square. Okay, that is if A is uh, greater than 17 centimeter but less than 20 centimeter for 15 centimeter specimen. If it is, it is greater than 13.3 and less than less than 11 uh, for 10 centimeter specimen, we use this formula. Okay, so let's see what these uh, variables are. So A is the distance between the line of fracture and the nearest support measured on the central line of the tensile side of the specimen. Okay, so there will be a fracture point. Okay, there will be a fracture somewhere. And so that distance from that to the nearest support is known as the A value. Okay, it's in centimeters. B is the width of, width of the specimen. D is the failure point depth. Okay, we must take the depth in from the failure point only. So most probably the depth will be same as the specimen, specimen but sometimes the depth can decrease okay it depends upon the specimen only uh, now l is the supported length and p is the failure load or the maximum load that we have calculated or we have observed from the uh, readings okay so i hope you understand how to do this uh, flexural strength test it's a very interesting test it has to be performed on the concrete so that can, we can understand its behavioral properties especially for the beams okay so thank you once again. Please uh, uh, comment your suggestions. Please rate my presentation. Please recommend and share the slides. This is my link to the N Academy pl platform. Copy this in your browser so you can see the works that I've done based on the concrete uh, ingredients, workability of concrete, and the test for the fresh concrete. Everything is over there in my profile. So that's all for today. Thank you for, thank you for being a very good listener. I wish you a great day. Until next time, ciao.